Hi everyone, thanks for joining our webinar series on injection. My name is Yuzi, I am engineer at Decatonics. Joining with us on the webinar is Dr. Sandeep Deshmu, he is a committer with Apache Apex and software engineer at Decatonics. Here are some logistics regarding the webinar. This webinar is being recorded. The recording will be available after the session has ended to watch again and share it with your colleagues. So if you have any questions, you can submit them through the throughout the session. So, the, uh, so there is a questions tab through which you can type in your questions. And we will be happy to answer them as and when they come up. So without any further ado, I will hand it over to Sandeep. Yeah, thanks Yogi. So basically this uh, seminar or the webinar, uh, we have split into two parts. Firstly, uh, uh, Yogi will give us a brief introduction about Apache Apex, the architecture, various features and key concepts so that uh, someone who is attending this for the first time is not left out. And once he covers that, uh, I will then uh, give a use case where we will ingest data, we'll read from Kafka, do some enrichment, transformation and then put that in uh, JDBC, uh, MySQL output. And there we will see what are the features and how, how it is easily done in Apex. So to get started with uh, introduction to Apex, uh, over to you, Yogi. Okay, so this is the outline for this session. So first I will talk about uh, what is Apache Apex. Then we'll go through uh, the rational and principles behind uh, this project. Then I will briefly discuss about some of the use cases which we have seen. And I will talk about some architectural overview. And then we'll look at the key concepts with respect to Apache Apex. So Apache Apex is a platform and a runtime engine that enables development of scalable and fault tolerant distributed applications. So you can process real time data that is streaming data as well as batch data using Apache Apex. Apache Apex is a Hadoop native platform. So it uses basically HDFS and YAN components of Hadoop and it can run on any distribution of Hadoop. You can develop high throughput, low latency applications uh, using Apache Apex. And with Apex, we have a library of commonly needed business logic. We call that library as Mallar library. And you will uh, see many of the operators which are pre-built into the system, which you can directly use for your applications. And there is also provision to write your custom logic. and uh, tap them into operators to use them in your applications. So typically, if we look at uh, any big data project, what we see mostly is like uh, many of the projects go to uh, POC stage, but very few projects reach to the actual production scenario. And we have seen various reasons behind this. So mainly the reasons are listed over here. So some of them are like, uh, so it's difficult to get expertise to develop uh, distributed applications. Or, you know, if there are some, uh, let's say, backward incompatibility issues or upgradation issues or issues like handling fault tolerance and things like that, then you are Basically, complexity of the problem increases and that uh, leads to like delay in the project and missing the deadlines of the project. And basically, then we miss out on the time to market. So in order to you know address these issues, we thought that we need something which can solve the production scenarios and something which is more operable. 
So this is the main rationale behind the Apex. And that is where it stands out from some other streaming platforms. So mainly it is like the production ready. And uh, we have already a few customers running this project uh, in production clusters. So the rationale behind Apex is like the first thing is we want to migrate a lot more use cases to Hadoop. So currently they are using some legacy systems and we want them to use Hadoop. And we want to productize those use cases, not just the POC, but the productization of the actual use cases is the most important task. And we want users to extract value from big data. So it is not just about getting data into Hadoop, but we have to extract the value out of data. And the last thing is uh, reducing the time to market. So we have seen cases where, you know, from POC to actual uh, production is done in few months or even few weeks. So these are the guiding principles behind Apex. The first thing is operability. As I talked about, like, this is the most critical thing because if we look at the typical development of big data project, you will see that only the 20% of the cost is on the functional side. 80% of the cost is on operational side. So handling things like fault tolerance, scalability, and uh, things or you know, the SLA guarantees like throughput and latency guarantees. So those are most critical tasks and we want a platform which can handle operability of the shell. So the application developer doesn't have to bother about these issues. Application developer can just concentrate on his core business logic and leave the complexity about operability to the platform. So this highly scalable and performant uh, uh, ability for the applications is given by the platform. Fault tolerance is taken care by the platform. You don't have to write any boilerplate code for maintaining state of the application. Platform will uh, periodically take checkpoints, maintain the state. If there is some failure, it will recover from the last checkpoint and state. And this is all without any single line of code by the application developer. The next thing is it's Hadoop native. So if you already have Hadoop cluster in your organization, you can directly deploy Apex on top of your existing cluster. It's easy to integrate. So we have already rebuilt connectors for many of the third party uh, tools in the Hadoop ecosystem. And you can integrate very well with the existing uh, components. And easy to develop is right. If in case, if you need to write some custom logic, it's a very easy interface. Uh, mainly it is in Java. So there is very little learning curve over there. So these are some of the use cases. And uh, I think these are just for the examples. You can think of some other use cases from this, uh, which are specific to your organization. So we have seen customers from ad tech domain using this for serving their real-time dashboards for their customers. We have seen our customers in IoT domain using this platform for ingesting data from sensors and uh, then doing some downstream analysis on it. We have seen it getting used in finance domain for cases like risk analysis or fraud detection. Uh, then for processing CDR records in telecom domain or basically any sort of ingestion like you can think of migrating data from various different sources to Hadoop or any other uh, you know third party destination. So we have seen many use cases around ingestion using Apex. So this is the architectural overview of the platform. 
on the bottom la most layer we have physical machines or virtual machines or cloud so platform is agnostic about what is the underlying uh, architecture on top of that we have uh, hadoop distribution so we support all major hadoop distributions like cloudera hortonworks pivotal mapbar or even apache hadoop so on top of that we have streaming runtime or that is the apex engine so apex engine is running on top of yarn and on top of that we have this streaming applications these streaming applications are built using the operators in the mallar library which is open source collection of uh, pre built operators or commonly used functionality as well as you can write your own operators for the applications on the topmost layer we can see the graphical interface for design and launching the applications the visualization dashboard and the management console so this top layer is actually a part of a proprietary data torrent rts release but there is a community edition of the rts which is free for trial and uh, which is not open sourced but free to use so any application in apex is basically designed as a directed acyclic graph so you will have vertices and edges so vertices in this case indicates the computational units or operators as we call them and the edges in the graph are the streams or the data flowing over the wire so streams are represented as tuples tuple is nothing but any java serializable object with associated schema so here is an example when the any dag gets actually deployed on the cluster so on the bottom layer you can see some vertical rectangles which are representing nodes so in the green whatever you can see are the containers deployed on the node so this directed acyclic graph has one stream which is streaming application master so job of the application master is to monitor all other containers getting the heartbeats from other containers and detecting any failures and you know trigger the redeployment if there is any failure in the pink you can see map redis jobs so this is just to indicate that apex applications can coexist with your existing map redis jobs so on the same hadoop cluster you can run map redis as well as apex applications on the top you can see apex cli which is the command line interface for launching the applications and to right we have dt console and dt gateway which are uh, the uh, web based graphical tools for monitoring and launching the application so these two are available as a part of data torrent rts so as i said earlier we have this mallar library which is collection of operators so the things like uh, connecting to various different file systems let's say ftp s3 sjfs or various uh, id vms systems over the jdbc or no sql systems like cassandra or messaging buses like kafka or social media like twitter or in memory things like maybe apache geo so there are various operators available off the shelf you can just use them and configure them for your use case you don't have to write them from scratch then important concepts so first thing is about windowing so incoming stream is a continuous data we try to chop that into windows so we introduce something called as control tuples as begin windows and end windows by default window size is half a second but that is configurable and 
other most important thing is these windows are not micro batches by that what i mean is when you receive a begin window and when you when you receive the next tuple that tuple gets processed immediately and passed on to the next operator this tuple immediately after begin window doesn't have to wait for the end window for the processing so in some of the micro batching platforms the entire window has to wait till the window completes this is not the case with apex and that is the reason why we call it as true streaming and not the micro batch so this windowing is actually uh, essential for two important reason one is for the platform it needs some periodic checkpointing and bookkeeping mechanisms so all those things are based on windowing and for the application developer actually if, uh, they need some aggregates based on uh, time windows then they can utilize these windows and initialize their uh, aggregates in begin window and get the results in end window the next important thing is about uh, scalability so <laughs> apex supports both static as well as dynamic scaling so by static scaling i mean that uh, for a particular application you can define number of partitions for a particular operator so i can say that my operator 1 needs two instances operator 2 needs two instances whereas operator 3 needs only one instance so by dynamic scaling it means uh, like so based on some predefined condition for example throughput or latency i can define that if my throughput goes below certain level i should increase the number of partitions or if my latency goes above certain limit i need to increase number of partitions so these are features provided by the platform you just have to do the configuration for the conditions and uh, things will learn seamlessly then the next important thing is about fault tolerance as i said earlier there is no boiler plate code required for the fault tolerance the fault tolerance is taken care of by the platform so for that actually platform takes uh, regular checkpointing that is it saves the operator state onto hdfs at periodic intervals and this checkpointing is asynchronous and each operator maintains its own state and so it's distributed it's not like application master is controlling all the checkpointing for all the operators so the application master will actually uh, read the heartbeats from all other nodes and detect the failure in case of missing heartbeats and then basically the yarn process status notification will detect that okay a particular container has some problem and it gets redeployed so whenever it is redeployed the replay of the data is done from the last checkpoint state so for example if my operator 4 goes down it will get redeployed and it will restart from the last checkpoint it said and the data replay will be done from the upstream operator that is operator 3 so we have some store uh, which is uh, in memory which we call as buffer server so buffer server is uh, in memory pops up mechanism so it stores the result emitted by upstream operator until they are used by the downstream operator buffer server also takes care of uh, back pressure so for example if my operator 2 is slow as compared to operator 1 so there needs to be some queue where we store the tuples Uh, intermittent so if this buffer server goes out of memory then it will automatically get spilled over to the disk and application developer doesn't have to worry about it
slide is not moving. Okay, so maybe I will uh, just uh, recap briefly about buffer server. So buffer server is uh, in memory pubsub mechanism. It stores the result emitted by the operator until they are consumed by the downstream operator. And it also takes care of uh, back pressure. So let's say if my operator 2 is slow as compared to operator 1, the data will temporarily get stored in buffer server until it is consumed by operator 2. And if buffer server goes out of memory, then it will automatically get spilled over to the local disk. And this is taken care of by the platform. Application developer doesn't have to write any code for this. Buffer server also guarantees ordering and adam potency for the doubles. Let's talk about uh, processing semantics. So Apex supports both uh, all the three, that is, at least once, at most once, as well as exactly once processing semantics. So the most difficult one to achieve is exactly once. So uh, let's go into details of that. So it is important when we are writing to some external system. So let's say we are writing to databases. So the requirement over here is that the data should not be duplicated as well as there should not be any loss of data. So even if there is some failure and uh, recovery, so whenever we replay the data, we should make sure that it is not duplicated at the external system. So exactly once is actually achieved by the combination of at least once, that is at least once will actually replay the data whenever there is a failure. Adam potency will guarantee the same tuples get replayed whenever there is a, a replay of the window. And consistent state will make sure that there is no duplication at the output. So actually the platform provides the facility for failure recovery and uh, replay as well as it provides adam potency by repeatable windowing and the uh, operator implementations take care of the last point that is the consistent state at the output so if you are looking at uh, any output operators from a la library those operators are uh, meant for maintaining the consistent state at the output so it supports exactly one's output. But if you're writing your own output operator, then there are some guidelines available for maintaining exactly one's semantics. So this was all about the platform architectural overview and key concepts regarding Apex. Now, uh, if there are any questions, uh, we can you can type, type in those question. And I will hand over to Sandeep uh, for the application demo. Yeah, so I tried to answer most of the questions so far. And uh, if there are further questions, maybe we can take them up. Otherwise, uh, I think we'll, let's get started with the, <coughs> the main topic of ingestion. <coughs> Yeah, can you see the slides? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is a, a third part in the injection series. Uh, it's a bit of series or webinar series on Hadoop injection made easy. And here we will be ingesting the unbounded data. We'll be reading from Kafka, writing it to JDBC, and in between we'll enrich the data and transform uh, some of the tubules. Now, just a quick <coughs> recap of what's ingestion is the process of obtaining, importing, and analyzing data for later use of storage. Now, with uh, the with big data coming into picture, it's uh, there are like some complexities added. 
these days organizations will have many sources of data and the first thing itself becomes what is my truth that I would like to ingest, the golden truth. So discovering the data source becomes my first challenge, finding it out. Then actually you get into importing the data and processing the data. Then you uh, import the data and process it. Uh, here we will see the processing of enrichment and transformation. And then you send it out for durable data stores. <coughs> In simple words, uh, historically it used to be called ETL with added that to big data, we, we call it as like data ingestion. <coughs> So in this use case, uh, basically, I would like to read uh, from Kafka, JMS, JDBC, where you can sort of continuously read the data, unbounded data. In case of, let's say, JDBC, you can pull it continuously and get more and more data. <coughs> Do some uh, transformations or uh, like processing. You can enrich the data, transform data, or add few more operators as you would like to, and then finally store it. Uh, here we are using JDBC to store the data, the MySQL will be our destination. Uh, this use case uh, will be reading from the Kafka. The data is a customer transaction data where uh, banking transactions are being done with some information uh, are being pushed. So all the transactions that are happening, let's say in the blank, bank, are pushed to Kafka. <coughs> And what we are doing here is uh, reading that data using a Kafka connector that we already have in Malla. So Yogi explained us about the Malla uh, library. So this uh, Kafka reader uh, as well as the other operators are already there. They are picked up uh, as is from Malla library. So the Kafka reader uh, that's supporting uh, 0.9 version of Kafka, it supports multi-topic and multi-partitioning reading. <coughs> so let's say I have two topics and three partitions each, then I can have like six readers in parallel reading my data at that scale, or it can even be single reader reading from all the six. So you can configure it accordingly. But the point is if you have more partitions and topics, uh, you can partition this to a large number to scale. Uh, there's one more element which actually is uh, missing here where uh, we also parse the data that is coming in. So we specify the schema and make sure whatever we are reading is up to that schema and if there is anything wrong, we redirect those records to the error port. Then uh, we enrich data. In this case, uh, the data contains a city where this transaction is happening. Let's say the, the, uh, the city name of the bank, uh, the branch where it is, uh, this transaction is done. And we enrich this data from uh, master data where we have a mapping of city to state. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, so this data enrichment uh, source could be a file, could be a JDBC store, something like that where we can configure it. Right now we are using a smile, uh, using a file here. The enriched data is uh, sent to the next operator, that's the transform one, which which takes uh, the transaction amount and marks it as hand. So basically, uh, whatever is the data, the tuple contains the data. Based on that, you can have your own rules, logic, and make some of the addition add few new fields. In this case, let's say if the transaction amount is more than 1,000, you make it high or you make it low. So you can just uh, write expressions, uh, which could be even uh, outside as a configuration <coughs> and use it. And then finally, we store this data into JDBC output. Um, as uh, Yogi explained, uh, the we do support exactly one's processing within the Apex system. And a JDBC output operator supports exactly one's processing. <coughs> yeah. uh, a key point here, uh, the parallel partition, uh, where is, let's say you have two topics and three partitions of Kafka, then you can have six Kafka readers reading from each of the partition. 
then we can have the rest of the pipeline also being paralyzed, uh, being parallel to each of these readers. So if you have six readers, there will be six and reach six transform and six JDBC, and they will be in one straight line. So the, the reader one uh, gives to the enrich one, to the transform one, and the JDBC one. So that way you can run these pipelines in parallel and uh, you can really increase the throughput of your uh, application. <coughs> so let's get into uh, a quick uh, walkthrough the code and then we'll see the demo uh, that's running on in the system. So this is my code. Uh, if you see, uh, this is what is the populate DAG method, which uh, when you are writing an application, you need to write the code. So you need to specify the DAG, what operators you are using and how they are connected. <coughs> and you can specify some of the properties for the operator. So I'm using Kafka input here. Then I'm using a parser followed by uh, an enrich operator transform and JDBC and I'm specifying some of the properties for enrich that I need to enrich from a file system and all I'm doing is for each city uh, look up for the state and enrich the state field. <clears throat> Similarly for the transform I am seeing there is a label in the uh, data if the transaction amount is more than 1000, label it as high, else you label it as low. <coughs> Same way here, uh, I am using the JDBC uh, operator and I am setting some of the stores information, how I would like to use this. Uh, this is required because uh, you can have the same operator being used in a different way with different stores. Uh, this is just to give a generic implementation and you can extend it for multiple use cases. And then I'm connecting my DAG. So I'm reading from Kafka. So this stream is connecting one operator to the other. The first one is connecting Kafka to parser. Then the second one is parser to enricher. Then enrich to transform and transform to JDBC. <coughs> and here is some information that I need to set for the JDBC to say that my Java field name is customer name, my SQL field name is customer name and then what is the type that I am doing and is it an SQL type or not. To configure this app, uh, we will need to provide uh, basic Kafka properties. Mainly you give the topic name, you give the cluster details and how many tuples you would like to read per window. <coughs> then uh, for the parser, uh, we need to give the POJO class uh, that uh, that will be used as a, on the port. So this is a specification on the output port that uh, I would be using this particular class, uh, emitting this class at the output. This is my schema that I'm expecting for the input, basically customer name is string, customer phone is string and all like that, transaction, transaction date, all those details are there. Here uh, we are specifying that the parser should be uh, partitioned in a parallel partition. This is what I was talking about. If, if we are having multiple <coughs> topics and uh, partitions in Kafka, you can do a parallel partition here. Then I will uh, provide the enriched properties. Uh, again, I would like to specify the tuple class, uh, which is the transaction schema, the same one that is coming from parser. <clears throat> I'm emitting something which is enriched. I'm adding a field there so that the schema is changed. <clears throat> it's transaction schema enriched. Then uh, I, I need to give from where I will be reading the uh, the master data. That's where uh, it's on temp circle mapping dot JSON. This is on HDFS. You can see the path where you would like to have the file and then the partitioner. So in this case uh, we are having two, two parallel partitions, two partitions of 
and richer. So basically, uh, all the operators will be one, but there will be a parallel processing mode too. And we'll see in the demo how this is uh, is actually uh, deployed in the cluster. Then comes uh, the transport. Uh, the transform operator there also we need to specify the tuples whatever is my input and output in this case we have the same uh, schema that is input as well as output <coughs> we are just uh, transforming one of the field that is the label high and low and just uh, adding the setting the value to it we are not changing the schema here but there could be as a change in the schema uh, for the JDBC, we will need to provide the drivers, uh, the details about the JDBC URL, node, uh, database, and uh, table name, and all that information is required, and login details. <coughs> so let me <coughs> show you that. So this app. Uh, I started about a couple of days back and uh, it's still running. So I thought let it continue to run because that's what uh, people would be really interested in seeing that yes it is going on since last couple of days and uh, we will see <coughs> how it is doing. <coughs> I even tried to uh, stress test this in between, did something such that some of the operators will fail and it recovered and now it's still going fine. So, logically we have defined the application as Kafka input followed by parser and reach transform and then the JDBC. <coughs> but when it gets deployed on the cluster, uh, we have specified enrich as partition of two. So you can see enrich is two. The reason for putting this is typically enrich will be connecting to an external source. Let's say if you are connecting to SQL. For enriching each of the tuple, you are going to fire a query and there would be a delay in getting that response. So, so it would be good to have more such uh, instances of that to increase the throughput. Post enrich, you can see uh, there is an unifier which is automatically added by the system because there are two operators of enrich. The one transform, the data is unified and sent to the transform, and this is taken care by the uh, Apex platform, the user don't need to do anything. <coughs> so right now, uh, if you see, uh, it, it's uh, it's actually processing very less number of uh, tuples per uh, second. So let us try to increase. Yeah, so here this is what is saying uh, it can read about 1000 tuples uh, at a time uh, per sec per window, which is 2000 per second. But in this case, the generator is very slow. So, what we will do is we will increase the generator rate <coughs> to match to this. So, so, I'm just increasing it to 1000 tuples, and now. Uh, It's processing uh, 1000 per window, that is 2000 per second. Each window in Apex is by default 500 milliseconds. <coughs> so you can see here, now the ingestion rate has gone from, which was very low, to about 2000 tuples per second. So I'm I'm putting it uh, in a in a table called Meetup, and we can see it's going up. Last three digits are same, but but the other digits are different. So so now you can see. Okay, so it's going up, and <coughs> sorry about that. So basically, in case. Uh, you would like to really try out on a different large scale. Uh, one option here is to do a parallel partitioning where you have data 
read at a different at a parallel parallelly from Kafka itself from different topics. Then you have the parser, which is a lightweight, so it can be just single. Then you have enrich, which will enrich it, transform it, and finally JDBC, which will write it to the output. <coughs> in in case of JDBC, uh, this is exactly once processing. So let me spend some time and how we achieve this. Whenever a system is uh, saying that it is giving a uh, exactly once processing guarantee it's very hard to achieve and when we say we do that we need some help from the external system we on our own it's extremely difficult or it's very difficult to do that <coughs> so in this case um, we maintain some info in the JDBC store itself so we have a table that maintains what data is being uh, pushed to my SQL per window and each window is uh, one transaction so if you see uh, a window processing either it is emitted to the output or not emitted and when it is emitted we store the information that this got stored in JDBC <clears throat> now if there is any failure and you are coming back let's say 10 windows before <coughs> because uh, we, we support at impotency uh, there are a couple of things each of the tuple that is being played is guaranteed to be played in the same order as well as in the same window with this assumption and the guarantee provided by the platform in the JDBC uh, operator I am guaranteed to get the same tuples in the same order to be pushed in with this, I can just make sure that, okay, I can find out if these tuples, this set of tuples are either already pushed to JDBC or not. If they are not pushed, then I push. And if they are pushed already, that means this was already done previously. I just need to skip those tuples. And that's, that's the way uh, we achieve uh, exactly once uh, processing in JDBC. <coughs> Any any question? Uh, so one question <coughs> is, uh, can you give the <coughs> yeah? Can you give the link for this demo application so it's good? Yes, yes. So we will put up that. Uh, there is already a good blog uh, on the data torrent website which talks about how this is achieved. Uh, we have added few more functionality to that, but uh, it, so you can maybe look for that blog and share the link with everyone. Now that's an excellent blog which gives you uh, reading from Kafka and writing to uh, JDBC and how the exactly once processing is done. Okay, then uh, these uh, examples, yes, we'll put up most of this type of thing are already there in the Apex uh, Malar library examples or applications directory, but this one particular uh, we will also add uh, there in the examples uh, repository directory. Okay, <clears throat> so to learn more about Apex, uh, do visit uh, apex.apache.org uh, and subscribe to our mailing list of users or dev. Uh, you can download Apex, try it out. The community version uh, is free for use and uh, the enterprise edition is also you can use for a few months to try it out and if you're happy uh, please uh, we would be happy to hear from you and uh, provide you the licensing information for the data torrent rts release version and uh, yeah we do have uh, regular meetups uh, happening across the world and uh, some of the webinars uh, are here for the worldwide community to uh, we understand more about the <coughs> Apex. So this examples directory has uh, uh, the source code for most of the examples as well as there are some apps in the Malar uh, repository. The slide share uh, link provides you uh, all the presentations that are done and uh, the last but not the uh, least we have a free enterprise license for startups. So if you are a startup and would like to use uh, Apache Apex the data torrent RTS version of it is free for use for uh, with some uh, for for some period, and feel free to get in touch with us. Okay, uh, thanks, Yogi. Uh,
uh, if there are no specific questions, uh, maybe. No, so yeah. there are no specific questions as such. Uh, I have uh, responded to the some questions privately, and yeah. those which are relevant for all, I have replied to all. Great, thanks. Uh, okay, so thanks, Sandeep. So thanks again, everyone, for joining our webinar today. Look out for more webinars by DataTorrent. So if you are subscribed to our Meetup channel, you will get the announcement for the upcoming uh, Meetups as well as webinars. And you can visit our website, datatorrent.com. Then you will get uh, more information. And you can also look at the apex.apache.org. And uh, this video will uh, be uploaded to YouTube and the slides will be uploaded to SlideShare and you will get the links on the beta uh, community forum. Okay, that's all. Thanks, have a great day or good night depending on the time zone. Goodbye. Thanks guys. Bye.